This was a lot harder list to construct than I thought it would be. The top 10 North Carolina sports moments of 2023. Every time I thought the list was finished, something else would come to mind. Like I have honorable mentions here. Aaron Matson winning a national championship. One of the best stories in all of sports. Didn't crack the top 10. She's She was a player a year ago for UNC field hockey. And then her first season as a coach for players that were her teammates a year ago. She wins a national championship. Just insane. Duke football getting its first top 10 win since Steve Spurrier in 89. While Spurrier was in the building in prime time against Clemson. App State spoiling game day for JMU. Like these are some of the honorable mentions on the list. So what made the list? Let's get to it. The top 10 sports moments of the year. And it starts with number 10. The Hornets drafting Brandon Miller. Charlotte got some lottery luck. We had that moment. It was about a 10 second period where we thought Charlotte going to get Victor Webanyama. They were in the final three after that commercial break. And then the Hornets appeared on the card for the number two pick, meaning the Spurs had the chance to draft Wimby. Charlotte had to settle for Brandon Miller, whom they selected over Scoot Henderson. Time will tell whether or not Mitch Kupchak made the right pick. Number nine. The ACC leaving Greensboro. After 70 years, the ACC moved out of the Sedgefield offices and... That was during the Wyndham Championship that we saw many of those moving trucks, moving things out. Great tournament, the Wyndham, this year. That's another one that's on the outside looking in. Those offices are now in uptown Charlotte, but something that had been bandied about for years became a reality. The ACC no longer home in Greensboro. Number eight. NASCAR returning to North Wilkesboro. Officially, it happened. See, 2022 was the year of revitalization for the track. And you had those memories in August where Dale Jr. is racing in the number three late model Sundrop car. But then the real, real happened. The all-star race, a massive crowd, the governor on hand, the full deal. And now it was so good, that all-star race... NASCAR saying, let's run it back. And the All-Star Race is going back to North Wilkesboro next year. It was a magical weekend. It was so much fun to watch it on television. And the future of that track that was dormant before COVID looks incredibly enticing and optimistic, which is great for that community. Number seven. Charlotte FC clinching its first postseason appearance. Year two as a franchise. And it's not just the achievement why this made it in the top 10. It was the circumstances surrounding the achievement. Not only did they clinch it the final game of the regular season, but it was at home and it was against Leo Messi on the other side. At that point, he had not lost a match that he had started in MLS. And Charlotte beat Leo Messi, won the game. No ties, won the match to clinch their first ever postseason appearance in front of a packed house for soccer at Bank of America Stadium. Number six. The Carolina Hurricanes Stadium Series game in February. This is even bigger than the playoffs. The playoffs have become something, fortunately, Canes fans can take for granted. Winning the division three straight years, going to the playoffs five straight years, won a Stanley Cup, then to another. Other than the Stanley Cups, this was the next big thing I can think of. And I was at the All-Star Game in Raleigh in 2011. I remember the draft in the mid-2000s in Raleigh. I grew up a Canes fan. I grew up in that area. I've been to several playoff games. This was the next biggest thing to the Stanley Cup because there was so much validation in having an outdoor game in the South, having the tailgate lots packed the way they were, the stadium packed the way they were, the atmosphere, what it was. It was such a massive, massive win for the Carolina Hurricanes. Not just on the ice that night, but as an organization. There was a lot of validation there. Number five. Wake Forest baseball 
making it to the College World Series. This team was the story of the spring and the summer here locally. Wake, they're going to be great again next year, but this team, we thought they were great going into the year. It was them and LSU the entire season that stood out from the pack. They won the first game against LSU in Omaha, and that was a fantastic game with the play at the plate, Bennett Lee tagging out the runner. And then it was one of the greatest college baseball games ever. Paul Skeens against Rhett Lauder. Rhett went, I think, seven scoreless. Skeens went eight scoreless and went to extras before NC State transfer Tommy Tanks hit the home run that put LSU in front. But wake to the College World Series for the first time since the 50s. And what a moment it was for Coach Tom Walter in that group. Number four. The ACC basketball tournament in Greensboro. John Shire, in his first year at Duke, won a championship and did it at the place that he's won an ACC title as a player. North Carolina had its season in in Greensboro. After being the preseason number one team, they turned down an NIT invitation. Jim Beheim retired in Greensboro. We had that weird press conference and then a few hours later while we're doing the show, Jim Beheim's just retired while we were on Radio Row. WD, am I buying you enough time? There's no value in Thank you for that. That has to be somewhere in the top five, and specifically it's at number four. Number three. Sports betting being legalized in North Carolina. Give me that cash up, man. This was years in the making. Finally, it got to the finish line. Now, I know there's some minutiae that they're working through, and we're trying to figure out the date that it's going to start. Hopefully, you get it by March Madness. We know it's not going to be ready in time for the Super Bowl, but all the I's are dotted, the T's are crossed. There will be sports betting, legal sports betting, in North Carolina starting next year. Number two. ACC expansion. Got to have it here. Cal, Stanford, SMU being added to the league in response to the Big Ten and the Big 12's realignment moves. It's a reactionary move by the conference, which unfortunately has been the MO for Jim Phillips since he took the job. Number two, the ACC making a seismic move. That'll start in 2024. Number one. Bryce Young, drafted number one overall. Carolina Panthers in their history have only picked two players number one in the draft. Cameron Jarrell Newton and Bryce, whatever his middle name is, Young. That's the list. Kid from Auburn, kid from Alabama. And they traded up to do it. Time will tell whether or not the, that move will pay off for the Panthers. But that is the number one move. The Panthers making that move, by the way, during the ACC tournament week. And you had all those meetings with Will Levis, Bryce Young, CJ Stroud and company. Felt like the Beatles were coming to town with all the travel party with the Panthers. And they ended up drafting Bryce. Hey, Bryce. 